Hi, everybody. We're in the Don Bass War Room. It's your Friday market report heading into the weekend. Brian Blessing with Todd Furman. Let's talk about, Todd, the numbers that have been dancing a little bit midweek. We've got NC State. They opened nine for a home game with Wake Forest. Money on the Deacons. It's down to the key number of seven. Love Tom O'Brien as a home dog, but you're saying laying the wood is not a good thing? This hasn't been a role that's been real favorable for Coach O'Brien in his tenure in Raleigh. You look at what NC State's done. Last week they were boat raced by a Virginia team who hadn't shown much. You have to wonder where the Wolfpack heads are at. Two weeks ago they lost with about 19 seconds to go against North Carolina. This team's taking on water ever since they upset Florida State. Let's go to the ACC where Miami opened a a two-and-a-half point favorite for their visit to Virginia. Now the Cavs are a one-point favorite. And the basic story here is that in the grand scheme of things, Miami's not going to improve or hurt their lot in life? No, the Hurricanes can't really do a whole lot for their ACC championship prospects here. They have a big game against Duke in two weeks, which will control their destiny. Virginia played a little bit better in dismantling that NC State team we talked about before. Coming into that game, Virginia had struggled against the number, finally got their first cover. I think they build on that success and get another one this week. Okay, what's uh, the deal in the Pac-12? We had USC. They opened up 11, uh, taking on ASU, uh, hosting the Sun Devils. This game has dropped all the way down to 8.5. I watched that Arizona State game with Oregon State last week. They had a chance to really put the Beavers behind a rock at a hard place. Uh, in the first couple of minutes of the game, and then they were thoroughly inconsistent. Why all the money on ASU? You look at Arizona State, and they do a lot of the same things Oregon can do in terms of spreading the field, using athletes in space. They don't do it nearly as well. Now, maybe USC tries to deflate footballs like they did last week. That wasn't effective. Imagine Monty Kiffin's got to try and find a way defensively. But what does USC have to play for right now? Three losses. This team was a national title contender coming in. I expect him to go through the motions. Todd Graham gets that signature Pac-12 win. All right, let's move it to the NFL. There's a huge game in the NFC East. Losers done. Uh, the winner of the Dallas-Philly game maybe back in the wild card race. A lot of football left to be played. But Philly opened a one-and-a-half point favorite. It swung all the way across to Dallas, too. That may not be the most shocking thing in the world. I guess the question would be, is there any way this thing keeps going? Does it get to three? I I don't know where it stops, but you look at Philadelphia. This team is four points away from being winless on the year. I mean, they found ways to get in their own way. One, six, and one against the number so far. They can't protect Michael Vick. LaShawn McCoy has been the lone bright spot. I think Dallas, despite their three and five record, has a lot more talent. Expect them to go into Philadelphia. I agree with this move. I think the Cowboys get a road win. Uh, This is a tough one to try to saddle up and play a total. I mean, they could go up and down the field. Uh, or their offenses are inept and they could do nothing. Then the other problem is they turn the football over. It's where do they turn it over? Do they give the other team short fields? I I don't know how you come up with an an opinion on a total. You look at these two teams. I mean, they're combined minus 20 in the turnover margin department this year. Philadelphia ranks dead last in touchdown percentage in the red zone, and they rank 30th in yards per point. I mean, this is a team that clearly finds ways to turn promising drives into turnovers, and get zilch out of those drafts. All right, listen, this is the game of the week in the NFL, and it was the most interesting number from the get-go where uh, you had Chicago only a one-point favorite at home against Houston, two seven-and-one teams. You know, on paper, kind of looks like a a lack of respect for the Bears. I know you thought it could come back down to pick. There are others thought it was going to stay. I mean, there's a lot of gray areas. What's going to happen here? Friday morning... Finally, a little Bears money surfaced up to one and a half. What happens on the weekend? I'm as interested to see where this number ends up settling as you are, Brian. You look at the Texans, the one thing they do well, among a lot of things they do well, they protect the football. And if the Bears can't get scores from their defense or special teams, they could be hard-pressed to sustain long drives. J.J. Watt is going to live in the backfield. The one weakness for the Bears, this offensive line still can't keep Cutler upright against attacking defenses. All right, and is there a Charles Tillman daddy prop out there? Uh, I think Charles Tillman will play, and I think, (laughs) assuming he's in the lineup, this number will stay right in that one-and-a-half, one range where we've seen it all week. All right, Todd is always ready to play, bringing his A-game for us on the Marker Report. On Fridays going into the weekend, we'll be back with you again Monday to let you know the early movers after the games have been hung on the wagering board over the weekend. Don Best Sports, what you need to win.